Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the narrative. This is malfunction. I'm here with my special guest. Uh, if you've got, you guys probably saw me with uh, Mark Abnett a couple, probably June, maybe July, and um, and we discussed a whole lot of things. And so I talked to him about coming on and doing a proper, proper, proper interview where we just met him talking about stuff. Mark, I'm going to start off with just telling, um, you know, asking you about who you are. Like, I mean, from, you're from New Zealand, you're over there in the UK right now. Um, you've done a whole lot of stuff and you've got a huge, you know, amazing journey to get to where you are now. Now, tell us, you know, about yourself growing up in New Zealand, how you, you know, your background a bit. Yeah. Um, thank you very much, Haru. Um it has been, yeah, an interesting 25, 30 years. Uh, the, I grew up in Hamilton and uh, Kitty Kitty Ra, uh, Hamilton born and bred. And uh, then I was um, basically in the 90s, as most kids, I, you know, I grew up, well, I grew up in the 80s and got the Transformers and G.I. Joes and all that stuff. Um, comic books were not as prevalent as uh, they are now. Uh, and uh, I was watching uh, the X-Men 92 animated series and I thought, you know what, there's a, there's a comic shop in town. I might rock on along there and have a look. And uh, I went into uh, Mark 1 in Hamilton and uh, Chris, the owner, um, or man he was the manager at the time. This is way back. This is about 92, 93. And, uh, he, and I said, oh, you know, it was the – you have these stereotype ideas of what a comic book shop looks like, you know, like a dungeon sort of thing, darkly dim lit and people not uh, being very helpful. But, uh, you know, it's a beautiful shop. And I, until this day, I, I think it's one of the best comic sh shops in the world. Um, it, it's well lit, well set out. The staff are absolutely lovely. Uh, and they, they bend over backwards for you. And, you know, here was me, little old me i think it was about 12 or 13 and uh wandered in there and um saw on the shelf what year was um, uh, i think about 93 or 94 it was so it was two or three months before age of apocalypse started because i i was into okay. my x-men and and then um i was into my x-men and and the first book i saw on the shelf was uh cable number 20 no number 19 yeah cable number 19 mm. which is here somewhere well, that's gonna... behind me so <laughs> Which was the first comic you picked up when you got into the shop? Was it, was, it Cable yeah, or it was, was it something else? Definitely, definitely Cable 19 because um, yeah, even in uh, the animated series, he was still a bit of a mysterious guy. You didn't really know too much about him. And, um, you know, there was no internet those days. You couldn't really um, no. you couldn't really Google who these guys were and what they were. And the only way yeah. you could find out who they were was through back issues. So it had Cable who yeah. was... Um, it was a white white cover, and there was a powerful guy in an apocalypse type suit standing over him, and Cable's mm. on the ground. But Cable had a, like an X Men costume on, which I hadn't seen before. So he had the gold, gold is, and yellow, is that the and blue. What's that? Hmm. Yeah. I, I'm just trying I, to I, figure I, out where is it. Yeah, I'm just trying to figure out um, because yeah, that's the year. Like that's when I stopped. That's when I stopped, uh, like I moved back up to Sun Ray and I didn't have um, uh, access to comic books at uh, all. So I wasn't buying anything at that point. Oh, so I can't is. imagine oh, a, a number. There it is. Oh, yeah. That's, yeah. that's the one there. Yeah. And I was like, it was quite, you know, this was quite striking for me. I was like, oh, okay, that's really, yeah. first of all, didn't recognize Cable wearing an X-Men uniform before. Didn't know who this mm -hmm. guy was. And yeah, it's part of Isn't Cable the, usually in red? Like he's got a no. red suit? No. No, no. Uh, never had a red suit. Oh, I'm thinking of Colossus. Damn it. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I could take you so, all over that so one. This, <laughs> so, this is 94. So anyway, uh, yeah, anyway, I think and definitely... um, 93, 94. X, X Men animated has come out. Now, tell, now I'm a huge uh, anime fan, and um, yeah. I watch it every day. It's like, yeah. it's just every day. I go through series, 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 series. Uh, new ones at the moment. I'm watching one called uh, Dororo, yep. uh, and it's amazing. Yep. You know, I uh, is that, is that something the one, about is that the one the guy looks like a crocodile, sort of he's got green skin on him? No, no, green... I think okay. it's Dor Dorodoro. <laughs> Close, yeah, this, one, this, this is a kind of a yeah, that's pretty cool. Like, he chops off, you know, tries to find his face again, 
Yeah, I've seen that, and that's on Netflix, isn't it? So, yeah. like Dororo, yeah. like I mean, for me, I just love to be able to have something playing while I'm working, and you know, and because I'm multitasking all the time, my brain works on that level. But the cool thing about the anime, X Men animated, there's a whole interview done by Eric De July on his uh, on his channel on YouTube where he talks to the to the showrunners and the writers of the show mm. and it's it's a brilliant I've, I've shared it on here on comic trade page uh, on our Facebook page but he talks to the the uh, husband and wife team and about mm-hmm. how they try to get it made you know yep. and why they how, what how much stuff they went through to try to get it made to get it passed to get it to that yep. and they said they never they never wrote their stories down. You know, they never wrote down. So they wrote it just, this is it. These are the characters. This is what their stories are. They didn't try to dumb it down for, a, like, say, a five-year-old, something like that. And so if, even if you were, like, a five-year-old, you got it. Even if you're a 40-year-old, yeah. you got an 80-year-old thing, you got it. And yeah. so why did, yeah, what was it for you for, um, for this show? I mean, for the so series? What, because, I mean, it's one of my favorites as well. Yeah, the, the biggest difference about it, and at the same time, you had gargoyles uh, out as well. Um, oh, it yeah. had it had yeah. continuous season long storytelling, uh, which which they yeah. kind of mucked up in the states because you, it used to be everything was very uh, episodic, one episode, one and done. That was pretty much what most cartoons back then did. They might have a two parter or a three parter, but this time, um, mm. and we were I think we were lucky in New Zealand because they actually came out in order, but in the states they didn't come out in order. So okay. you, it, it would go part one, then part three, then part two, then part six. It was all over the place, the the order. And that's because they just, the Fox, who was um, Fox Kids, who were uh, broadcasting in the States, right. they, it was never an issue for them before. They never had to think about it, that that these things yep. had to be done in order. Um, and it was the episodic nature of the storytelling that was interesting. And they essentially they did a lot with a little and uh they always yeah. they always dropped hints at stuff and hinted at something bigger between a relationship for, between one character and another they never got around to yeah. you know there was um i think uh cable's appearance uh his his computer professor is telling him uh, about the x-men and he, he's going through a profile one by one and the professor mm-hmm. gets to cyclops and Je- cyclops and cable says I know all about Cyclops and Jean Grey. Who else is there? And it's like, oh, he knows about them. What's yeah. that about? You know, yeah. and that that was he's actually the son of Cyclops and Jean Grey, uh, but that was never yeah. that was that was never fleshed out in the TV series. But there was a lot of stuff that was very. They didn't change too much from the original um, books and stories. You know, it was their own version is of that it. From the things Days were. Of Future Past? Is uh, that Days of Future Past? No, no, not that one. Uh, yeah, it would have been for all the mutants, uh, or the, mm. the yeah, the one where um, the the well, technically they don't call it the legacy virus, but Apocalypse puts a virus, and uh, he makes sure Wolverine gets a virus because then there's cures and antibodies for it. So that's how they stop that. Um, but yeah, it was first sort of saying, oh, okay, that's interesting. I thought, you know what, yeah, and went into the comic book shop, and they were so helpful. And because, as I said, there was no internet. I started off on part three of a three-part story. So I had to go back the next week and then get the, the issues yeah. before. And then next thing yeah. you know, I've and this is – and in the back of the comic books, you, you see these ads for um, comic book warehouses. So I went yeah. and found out every appearance that Cable was in, and I, th- I think I saved up my paper run money, and I had yeah. to go to the post office and get a money order made which is sort of like a check and sent the mm-hmm. whole thing off to the States based on at that time, the assumed ca- conversion rate of cash. <laughs> so, and, and ordered all my comics from mile high comics in America. And about three months later, about 50 comic books turned up. So, wow. and, 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 you know, it's funny when you, the monthly grind of comics these days, you know, I barely remember yeah. what happened last year in a series, but this was at a time I was go- I was trying to every 
month, every issue was felt so big yeah. and so massive. There was so much in there. Yeah. Now I can read a comic and I just blink and I'm like, oh, what did I just read sort of thing? But the, um, yeah. they, that's, they were... That's the um, easy story, isn't it? I mean, like, yeah. that's really the easy story. I mean, talking about the experience, so, like, I was in, like, in Auckland around about, gosh, when I was 17. So yeah. This is back in about, oh, man, let me see. For about eight, um, 80, 87, something like that, 86, 87. Yeah. And, um, and somehow I got, to, um, I got, um, uh, Encur- somehow I've turned on to X Men out of the mm-hmm. blue. I don't have any memory of how it happened, um, but I I do remember like I, all my life was like 2000 AD, like weekly, yep. weekly, monthly book, you know, for about maybe about at least ten years prior to that. So of that, and so somehow I got on turned into um, X Men, and then there was a, then I was looking around. Somehow I found out Heroes for Heroes for I think it was. Was it Harris for Sale in downtown or something like that? And the underground store? Or oh, it might Sounds be Mark right. 1. I think it was Mark 1. Yeah. So I would go in there every week with 60, 50 bucks in my pocket every week and come home with a pile of comics this big. Like, now you can't do that, right? <laughs> you, 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 I mean, like, you just couldn't. But the thing was that I would just come back with a brown bag and I'd get my um, bag and board. They're, all, they're always coming a bag and board because I've got... Put them in there right now. I'm not because I got to get on the bus and go home. And then I'd spend the whole weekend. No, I'd probably go home on that Friday night up because my paycheck came in. I'd go Friday night, spend all night reading. Saturday would go around drinking with my mate, workmates and stuff. And then Sunday come back and just carry on reading. And then the week for the next week. So I was on weekly. So I end up with like maybe X Men, Excalibur. Um, you know, when the both the X Men books came out. You know, yeah. at the time with ninety one. And then you had uh, New Mutants that come out. Yep. You'd have, um, gosh, uh, Alpha Flight. Anything with mutants was in there, I would be getting it. I was yep. not into Batman. I was not into anything else. No X Avengers or anything. Just mutants. That's why I like the, you know, the whole thing. That's where you started as well. And I think yeah. that whole... Um, well, the what, thing what about them, they, 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 they weren't what? just superheroes they dressed up and you know they didn't really have capes and tights or anything but they were they, yeah. there was a struggle and there was a struggle for identity and there was a struggle um for wanting to belong and you know with a lot, a lot of kids you know that that identifies yeah. with young young kids you know you're going through your, your yeah. teenage years and and you know <laughs> you, you want yeah. to belong and, and then you know it's a it's a, a mutants in particular a good we're a group that uh, people, uh, you know, have been discriminated against or people with disabilities, people with, um, you know, um, have been um, abused, you know, people gravitated towards them because they were always struggling and, and you know, being put down, yeah. but they kept fighting through. And, you know, it wasn't, sort of, it wasn't that's like... a cool sort of uh, concept, wasn't it? I mean, that's an amazing yeah. concept. I mean, it's been yeah. around since 63, if I remember right. Yeah. The X-Men's been around for 63. Yeah. And yet here we are in the 80s and 90s, you know, reading this, um, um, I guess this, up, I, I, I mean, it evolved, right? They just yeah. evolved over time with all these writers. Now, was it, was it Claremont series that you, that was that, or was it just after for you? What was what, sorry? Was it the Claremont and Burns series that brought oh, you right. into that? Because it was, no, no, no. Or was it, it just before it, no, no, no. It was after that. It was uh, just after the image guys had left. So this is just after, just just before uh, Age of Apocalypse. So um, you know, that's so the writer all, on the cable yeah. one. I mean, yeah, he's so, the writer on cable one. So that's oh, where they Jeff, got you into Jeff it. Loeb. Jeff Loeb. Jeff uh, Loeb was Fabian Nick- Nicolaza, yeah. and then Jeff Loeb came along, yeah. uh, who was in charge of um, Marvel TV. Um, but Loeb is uh, at this point. Jeff Loeb had re- he wrote <laughs> Commando, the movie, <laughs> with Arnold Schwarzenegger, and I think he had right. something to do with Team Team Wolf Two and stuff like that. And uh, he ended up writing. I think Cable was the first book he wrote, and this is when they were selling a hundred thousand copies a month, sort of thing. This is around the speculator yeah. boom when Im- Image is just taking yeah. off. You're looking at about. Yeah, about a year of uh, Spawn and, and stuff like that, and uh, Liefeld's drawing a hundred different books and not getting past issue two on them. Um, and yeah. yeah, and 
and the art here is uh, in here is actually Steve Scrose or Scorse or Scrose, who uh, Canadian artist who ended up doing all with Jeff Darrow did all the um, oh all the animatics and all the uh, oh come on all the, for the Matrix guys the Wiskowski 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 the Matrix Wiskowski guys brothers. slash well sisters now yeah, yeah. so. Um, yeah, so he he ended up doing all the uh, animatics and all the previs stuff. It's mm. no, it's not that. That's not storyboarding. There we go. So yeah, yeah. Um, and here's me starting to collect, and then I go back in the shop a month later, and then I pick up the comic, and it's like all the X Men comics are cancelled. I'm like fucking what? I just I just started. <laughs> I've just gone down this road because they literally said, it's, you know, you pick up the and it says we're cancelling everything. And because it was a four month event, this is the first time anything like this had happened because these are the days where yeah. you didn't reboot or start at number one with a new writer artist team or anything like that. You know, you were in, I think it was like X Men 320 and then um, or Uncanny 320. Every, every other book was in their 70s or 80s and we we're going to cancel all of them and it's going to be the age of apocalypse. And it was like, what the fudge is happening you know yeah. and it was crazy and even the comic book guys the chris they didn't know what was going on as well because it was a four-month event and they only get to see three months out so yeah it was it was absolutely wild so instead of buying one or two books i just bought tons of every everything x for two or three months and it was absolutely crazy mm -hmm. seeing these new interpretations but the the good thing about it is you you would know everything about them from the get go. I was felt in yeah. on the ground level, and I didn't have to yeah. buy back issues to research why this happened and this happened and this happened. Again, no internet. <laughs> so, but yeah. I I I as a kid knew as much as this other guy because we we're all reading along at the same time. So as far as it, it was a brilliant marketing stunt, the Age of Apocalypse, and yeah. um, you know, and it sold a truckload of books, and a lot of people have very fond memories for it because. It was around that 92 X-Men time and it was a time when it was the only way to get in and have a level, level playing field of knowledge. And yeah, and going back, probably not the best books in the world, rereading some of them, but some of the art in them yeah. is absolutely brilliant, you know. Um, you know, you, you Joe yeah, made I your errors, still in you, Auckland you Yeah. Yeah, I but, think I was still um, in Auckland that time and um, I, I'd, I'd come back around about late late 93 so uh, yeah i think i do remember that but it wasn't that fondness of that you know the memory Probably of not. that hey no. yeah. <laughs> well not not as much as i remember um the dark phoenix saga and uh mm. genosha because genosha was one of my favorite it was just a whole you know uh gosh there's extinction Jubilee agenda and, and, yeah yeah that was that's one of my favorite um probably yeah that would be my favorite storyline actually if i really yeah. think about it then would come with um uh, with that was, that was probably saga. the first time about, you know they had crossovers like inferno and four of the mutants and stuff but they weren't mm. tight and uh, extension yeah. agenda was the first tight crossover where you could go from issue to issue and it'd be a cohesive mm -hmm. storytelling experience. And yeah. also at the time, you didn't have trade paperbacks or hard covers. There were very, very few yeah. things to pick up. But I, I mean, I think I've got, what have I got here? Can I even open that? What have I got? Yeah. So I did pick up like fat Fatal Attractions, a, a paperback. I think it might even have the yeah. price, New Zealand price on it. And then Execution is yeah. Song. You know, because and the prices for these things were horrific, and they probably still are. But I remember <laughs> paying paying an insane just, amount at the time because you know, it was 30, it, 30 bucks it, or something. For oh, Kiwi to get one of those. So this yep. is it's got. Tw I think this one would it was twenty five mm -hmm. US. It would have been about sixty New Zealand at the yeah. time, and you know, you're twelve year old, sixty bucks. That was a lot, kid. <laughs> and you know, yeah, I've got, I, that's half my weight. Me being a double dipper that I am, I've got all the omnibuses and hardcovers yeah. and <laughs> as well. But yeah, these things I, I was reread -read these to death and treat them like absolute freaking Bibles, you know. Um, yeah. 
But that's the but thing about, about the thing when they put these out, isn't it? That like, I mean, like I was just holding this one up because this is from the library. I just saw this in the library um, this, um, the other day. I was there on Wednesday yeah. and grabbed it. I mean, I haven't read this for years. And I was looking, um, you know, because they made a movie out of it with um, Wolverine going back in time in the 70s. And, yeah. um, but I mean, you look at some of the artwork, you know, it's not, it's, you know, it's just superb artwork and, you yeah. know, from from the details and stuff and yeah. just how they arrange stuff. And, you know, I uh, I mean, it's it's memorable. It's, um, like the storytelling is so memorable that like we can reflect on it, but it's not like the reflection that, um, you know, nostalgia thing. It's not nostalgia at all mm. because you actually realize that there were great books and um, oh, good absolutely. writing. That, yeah. And, you know, and that, what you've that, got... That's with with the write, writing, Clement was uh, Chris Clement was real, really different for the time because uh, yeah. he was very uh, evocative and uh, a lot of it, he piled on the words, <laughs> and um, yeah. uh, you know a lot, a lot of uh, caption boxes and uh, a lot of thought yeah, bubbles. I think and, like that. and uh, yeah. he, I don't think anyone is as heavy-handed as he is these days, but at the time. You know that was it was a big change, and it was kind yeah. of a blessing to some of the artists as well because you know you're asking when you're asked to draw a team book, you know you're talking about seven or eight different characters, and then you got the enemies as well. So it's easier to do a book based on one character than it is to, for multiple characters for most artists. And these guys they were workhorses; they they didn't have things like the internet that to just distract them or cell phones or <laughs> email or anything like that. Or, they were, you know, they'd get yeah. up at seven thirty and work right through into the night just to get the pages yeah. done. You know, and you, you see they're absolute masters of their craft. And I'm not saying guys today aren't, but no, and you you know I mean, like, they, the, 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 the discipline that they had. And yeah. uh, they, they just, they, you know, they churned out some really, really great work. Um, mm. And uh, Clement came back uh, in the early 2000s to, to Marvel and um, the X stuff. And it wasn't quite the same as it was. So they gave him his own book, yeah. Extreme X-Men. And that's when mm. uh, Salvador Oroca, uh, he was doing color. They did colors over his pencils. And it looked, it looked a really good looking yeah. book, but Clement, being Clement, kind of <laughs> the way he always worked was he was he would always drop in hints and and teasers at something else, and a lot of the time he wouldn't come back to it. <laughs> so the the series for the first 15, 20 issues is pretty solid, and then it starts losing its structure because things haven't that it set up haven't developed. You've got a new artist in there. And just kind of lost steam. Whereas uh, yeah. now most stories and most arcs are pretty much made for trade. So you get three issue to six issue storylines. Yeah. And that's not necessarily a bad thing either because you've got to think mm. every comic book could be someone's first. And if they can't pick up that yeah. book and, and have a decent sense of what's going on, if they have to go online and, and figure it all out, you're missing a trick there. You probably haven't done your job as a writer or, or an artist. And whilst it's annoying to old fogies like you and me, it's like, I know all this shit. Well, I just I mean, want to get on with it. Yeah. It's like <laughs> it, a, it is, it's it's like a it's Batman an, book, isn't it? Yeah. It's like so a imagine, Batman book because you, you're like, they tell you Batman's death over and over in every single um, new arc. It's like, this guy's been around for 80 years. I'm sure any kid who knows, you know, who's seen anything, you know, who's on yeah. Batman knows that's his, that, Listen, that's who Batman uh, is. I, if I, if I see his different. mum and dad get killed in a movie again, I'll just pull my hair out, you know. Oh. That's probably the, one of the best things about the Spider-Man movies is they never show the new last two Spider-Man movies. They never showed the Uncle Ben getting killed thing. It's like, oh, thank God. <laughs> we know we know that. But they did you ruin... Know? But they did ruin Spider Man, though. He's like a sidekick in his, you know, in his own friggin' thing. But like, uh, hey, um, it'll change. About, uh, it'll change. <laughs> hopefully. So, like, I mean, you look at um, like uh, Superman. We know where Superman came from, so we don't need to have another ten thousand stories telling us where Superman came from and how he arrived on Earth. But you're talking about Jeff Loeb. I'm gonna head back to that uh, now. I hope my memory serves me right. Did Jeff Loeb do the long Halloween? Yeah, he did. Yeah, he did. 
So yeah, so yeah, him, so him and Tim, Tim Sale did a lot. Yeah, I watched. I just yeah. watching the animated one the other day. Yeah. What did you think so about that? I think it's an anime. a, 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 animation. They are trying. It's very hard to emulate Tim Sale's art style because it's a hmm. painted style. And they were trying to find a middle ground between something that works in animation and something that works on uh, that, that reflects what the book and the mood and the tone was like. I don't think they got it quite right. I and mean, it's an impossible task unless you have Tim Sale animate the whole yeah. thing himself, you know, because he's very stylized and, you know, the, uses the shadows and the darks really well and, um, and, you know, the negative space and stuff like that. Absolutely brilliant. It sets a whole, right. uh, it elevates the book, the art, the, a mm. million percent. It's not a book that you could chuck another artist on. So when you try and transfer that to the screen, it's it's not easy. So it, it, it was in a place where it felt a little bit like the traditional Batman animated, as in, you know, you don't see Gotham in the light sort of thing. It's fairly dark, but even yeah. then, the animated series is probably darker. Um, yeah, the the voice cast, it is something about the pacing in it that just didn't work for me. I think it's still a good adaptation. Mm. Um, I don't think splitting into two parts because it is a long story that was interesting. Uh, but the um, it, I'm glad it was adapted. I'm glad new people can see it. But I would prefer yeah. the book any day. Yeah, the the book yeah. is is far superior to the animated thing, and that's the thing you can't um, any any comic book should be written as and primarily as a comic. Uh, there's been a lot of instances in the last uh, fifteen to twenty years where you have these guys um, who have created comics as pitches for movies and TV series and stuff, and it just doesn't work. Yeah. It's got to be a comic. It's got to be a comic first and foremost. It's got to adhere to you know comic style structure and pacing if you try and make it a tv or a, you know it's like hollywood people coming in and doing certain things if you try and make it a movie pitch or something it'll never it will never work now the most interesting thing recently is probably keanu reeves on kickstarter and his berserker project now the difference that was hugely successful the difference mm -hmm. behind that is he did have Ron Garney, the artist, and can't remember the writer's name, but those are professional comic and comic people. So mm. whilst this berserker, basically, a, he's a Highlander, but he's a military man. That's right. that's all it is. Um, yeah. They, they have is definitely being used to pitch a TV or movie thing. And, uh, oh, yeah. Being, yeah. And, I mean, there but, was a whole... There but was they a whole do have... It they do have mm. the right comic people behind it. So first and foremost, those guys will make a great book. So, and it's, I haven't read it yet, but uh, from the sounds of it, it's not bad, you know, but again, it's, it's just Highlander with guns. So, or the old guard. I which, think I've got a know, copy guns. somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I bought a copy somewhere from um, New Zealand Comics and Collectibles, a website. Some guy, somebody was doing, um, an, um, you know, uh, uh, you know, a sale thing going on, and I bought a copy somewhere. It's up on the rack, uh, on the shelf there. But it was, I mean, it, it, it was meant to be a movie. It was done to, uh, you know, make money to get the yep. movie in motion. You got yep. your storyboards all set up. You, you know, probably, you know, the entire pitch, everything is all done. All you got to go is, so what's it about? Yeah. That's it. You know, so, so when you go to, you go, well, what's you know, it is. It has generated uh, good word of mouth and buzz as well. So that's the other yeah. thing that. So you see when when comic stuff is usually picked up for adaptation by Netflix or whoever, it's because the storylines have good word of mouth and buzz. Sweet Tooth recently filmed in New Zealand. Um, yeah. Why the Last mm. Man is coming out. There was first trailer for that dropped yesterday or today. Uh, it's, mm. uh, it, was, it was about eight. 8.30 a.m. in, uh, in Scotland. Yeah. So, yeah, you might uh, yeah, during last night. I heard about it on, on – yeah. yeah, I heard about it, somebody talking about it on YouTube, um, you know, um, gosh, on YouTube. But, like, I don't even – you know, it's not something I want to I wanna see anymore. Like, I don't want to see any more adaptations of comic books anymore. I'm, I've, yeah. got, I've, I've got the whole pile of why they spent from 
number one yeah. to 75 it is. You know, I, I think the first six is a trade paperback when I bought it because I missed out. So retroactively mm. bought the entire lot from somebody here on, on Trade Me. This is like about maybe seven, eight years ago. Yeah. Or I don't know, maybe about 100 bucks or something for the entire lot. But um, I think the story is great. I mean, the story, yeah. the concept, everything yeah. about it is great. I don't trust Netflix <laughs> with anything like that. I don't trust anybody anymore with any uh, comic book titles anymore. Mm. Unless, you know, um, because... Well, unless the creators just, are involved. Just, yeah. Or even with the creator involved. Uh, there's one creator that I have a with, uh, tip with. Even with the creator involved, because you're selling, you're trying to sell a product to a company that is wanting to make more products off it. So at the end of the day, they have the idea of what they want to do in their mind. Yeah. I mean, like I work for, you know, I yeah. work, I'm a company, I work for other companies, whatever, you know, so I just, you know, I get an idea of what I'm trying to do all the time. I'm trying to sell a product. That's the best product I could put out, but, but I'm a creator as well. So the creative part of me goes, Work hard, make sure this is good, make sure this is good, make sure it's palatable. And then, you know, it's, that's something we're going to talk about later on. But when it comes to these guys, I don't trust them anymore. Like, I mean, I love, uh, I love the boys. I have, you know, I have, you know, Funko yeah. toys. I have the whole series. I have issues signed and drawn, hard covers, you know, uh, drawn by Derek, um, mm. sketch with, by yeah. Derek Ross. But I will never watch it. I've just, yeah. Like I just when they came out, I was like, never gonna watch this ever. I'm done. It's it is a, it's a, it's so a different thinking, experience from the books. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, the, the thing is, then you're trying to make it pal palatable to people who've never heard of the characters, where you've spent like decades involved with these characters, and then you know. And I understand the TV side of it because I've, you know I've got a film degree, so I've I've learned how to. I mean, learn how how the whole that system works of trying to work this. But I still kind of go, well, as a comic, I want to be in my head. I want to escape. I don't want you to tell me what it should be, you know, mm -hmm. what these characters should be doing. I know what these characters are because I've looked at them for so many years. And I think why, I mean, why, is, why is an amazing, amazing story on its yeah. own, you know, and it's yeah. perfect. I think the biggest challenge and, and what we're not really seeing, uh, but we did a bit with, you know, the, let's talk about The Walking Dead for a bit, that is not translated as well, I believe, as the book is. But what it resulted in, and the Invincible TV series and uh, even Sweet Tooth, has been people going into comic shops or going online and buying yeah. the books. So yeah. if it's a good... I, I, I'm fully for all these things being great launch pads to get, get people to, into reading comics. One thing that's really yeah. disappointing about Disney... Um, is they've got a great opportunity with Disney Plus to just point people towards a comic book shop or the end of every movie just say, pick up the Fever Adventures yeah. here or pick up this here. And they don't do it. What was really interesting with the last, yeah. the, with Modoc, the uh, robot chicken guys who made that, uh, the stop motion Modoc series, um, which was on Hulu in the States and then Disney Plus everywhere in the world. I, I don't know if it was on Disney Plus in New Zealand, but. Um, uh, I, I liked it. Some, some people hated it. I thought it was quite funny. But at the end of every episode oh, in, in, in the States on Hulu, which mm. is uh, another streaming network, um, for, at the end of every episode in the States, they, they said if you, there was a title card that came up and it said if you want to see more MODOK, go, go, go to your local comic shop or go online and buy MODOK Head Games, written by the creators of the show. Mm. And I was like, mm. that's brilliant. But they didn't, for some reason, they cut that out of Disney Plus globally. And I don't understand. Yeah. It's, you know, this is well, this is a company. This like is all about. Up in the foot. It, yeah, you're put, leaving money on the table. And yeah. and it's a, it's a really yeah. frustrating thing. Now, I know mm. I know Captain America in the comic book isn't the same as, as, as Captain America in the movies, but there's plenty of standalone books there that have the same... You don't have to get into the ongoing run, but there are plenty of great standalone arcs that you yeah. know have the same um, deliver the same emotions and the same feelings uh, yeah. that the, the I mean, TV does. This guy's been around for you for decades. Yeah, it's it's frustrating that 
they, they, they don't seem to be, and DC are the same. You know, mm-hmm. it's frustrating they don't seem to actively be driving people to comic book shops. Um, yeah, but uh, yeah, uh, that would be a case. If I had, heaven forbid, I would do ever do anything, that would be a caveat for me that there must have a tag mm-hmm. in there somewhere. And for, I, I don't know, I thought it might have been some Hollywood guild issue you know like they say that the producers must be in this order and the credits and all that bullshit i thought it was something like that yeah. but no they can do that if they wanted to they can oh, say for it's more information three second, four second thing. yeah even I if mean, it's, it's right, 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 when it right people yeah. people are sitting in there waiting for the um post credit teasers credit, and yeah, stuff like credit. that it's like that's a perfect time to just say hey go to your local shop Go to comicbookshop.com or, you know, or heaven forbid, go to Marvel Unlimited if you wanted to read more about this. And yeah, yeah. It's, 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 it's a shame. Um, I, I think but, I mean, that's why you, there will be changes. That's why I, think that, I think that's why, like, you had, uh, what is it, like a decade? A decade of Marvel franchises ruling the cinema hmm. and a decade of where the comic book stores went downhill. You know, so uh, it's like you. It's it's, it's kind of interesting. Like, that's a that's an interesting yeah. one. So I know a lot of comic book store owners have done pretty well in the last ten years, and a lot of that has mm. to do with their ability to actually be good business people. Um, there's a lot of I, I, I go again, Chris Smart one in New Zealand. Like mm. that shop is amazing. It looks yeah. brilliant. It's laid out clean and tidily. Everything's accessible there. It's not a big room full of long boxes and a dark shelves and a, and a dungeon. You know, it's it's a store yeah. that people want to go into. And the same thing. So you know, the last ten years I've been all over the UK, and you know, when we've gone on holidays around the world, I've always tried to make sure I go into comic book shops all around the world. Mm-hmm. And the successful ones are ones that are very customer focused they yeah. have multiple income streams so it's not just comic mm-hmm. books it's also yeah it's you know and it's not just funko pops as well because some people can get tied up in too yeah. many of them um it's you know it's your dungeons and dragons which bring in huge money warhammer brings in huge money um and, and some yeah. places or even have a coffee shop or a reading corner or something like that coffee man there's huge margin in coffee anyone that and that's not just an indictment on comic book shops. Any store that can have a multiple revenue income stream in the last 10, 15 years from the global recession to the last two years with COVID up here, man, it's, man, I won't go down that rabbit hole. You guys don't know how lucky you are. Yeah, People let's just stay away from it. I've been trying to no stay away from idea. it myself. Yeah. You have yeah. no idea. And, you know, we've, we've yeah. basically been in lockdown for a year and a half and so much as you guys are basically yeah. two weeks. So people in New Zealand who kick off about COVID, yeah. don't, you're doing better than everyone else. It could be better. I know. But you're doing know. better than everyone else. But um, Yeah, I'm know. very um, appreciative of what we're doing. So that's why I stay yeah. away from it when, I, when we do this. Uh, so yeah. um, let me see what we're saying. Like, so I used to own a comic store, right? Okay. So back in 2014, 2015. So I, I was like researching all the good stores in the world. That was yeah. my first stop. It was like, yeah which ones are successful, wh- what are they offering, and the most successful one was in Australia. Like the most... M- Min- was that Minotaur one, or A- A1? I, I, have no, I can't remember what the name was, but like it was at that time, this is 2014, it was like the most successful one in the world. And it wasn't in America, you know, the whole yeah. thing was, the laughable thing was, it wasn't in America, the home of the com- yeah. superhero comic books, right? And so I was like, this is, I, I went through my Tick box, okay, what do I need? What do I need? What do I need? First thing, it has to smell nice. It has to be well lit. Yep. Yep. It has to be able to allow females to, and young kids to come in and be, uh, be they're, able they're, to come more, in. They are more than 50% yeah. of the market. You know? Yep. If, they, yep. Uh, if I can get females and uh, young kids to come in and parents at the same time to be able to come in and feel uh, comfortable in there, and, um, you know, because I, just like you, I've been all over comic shops in New Zealand and it was always the thing. So, you know, I, I need to have this, I need to have this. And so, you know, I had, I had that one-stop shop, but one thing I didn't do smartly was to move into manga really quickly. 
And this was like in you know six seven Huge. years ago. And if what? I had, if I had, if I had, because what had happened, I run out of money by the time I got into that, and then I wasn't able yeah. to turn it around, and I had to set it is, up, and that, yeah, that was absolutely, failure. totally so, understand. It's very but, cash up front heavy business. It's yeah, yeah that's a really hard one. Hurt a lot right. of these companies. I yeah. mean, these businesses because of cash up front. Yes. And um, and you're right because the um, the these two big two that everybody recognizes are the most iconic characters in the world. Yes. They couldn't. They didn't allow um, you know the stores that they they put their product in to be yes. to be successful on the yes. back end of those for the last ten years. And yeah, sure, some have succeeded because of what they've done. And I've actually told people to do some of the things that I hadn't done so they could yes. become successful. And yeah. some haven't listened, right? Yeah. And some you know. Or yeah. we're more aware, but it's, so, it's, it's the, business is business at the end of the day, right? You're trying to make a, you're trying to make an income, and if you're doing it in comics, you have to diversify. Yeah, um, there's the margins in monthly comics, and the risks you take with stock sitting there is incredible, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, and then everyone expects your Wednesday or Thursday, Thursday in New Zealand, but yeah, everyone, it's amazing mm -hmm. actually at the end of the day how quickly New Zealand gets their comics compared to the rest of the world, because. You know, you, you can only be shuttered off at your, your Wednesday Warriors. Your, you, you know, you go in there and you pick up your books for the week. Yeah. And with everything being online now, you, you can't. You used to be able to just sit back and ignore stuff, but now, like, you want yeah. it the day it comes out, and blah blah blah. And if you've, let's say, you've ordered twenty copies of Justice League One and you only sell five of them, you know, that's yeah, you, you're fucked. You, you're stuffed, and you have to sell it for you well, know, pretty much you lose money and end, sell it off. Yeah, and the so other the, end is the people that ordered yeah, they, decide they somehow they're not able to buy it. Now you're stuck with ordered stuff, especially for, yeah. for other people that's yeah. sitting on the shelf that you can't yeah. move because nobody else is reading this except those and people it, that were reading that. Yeah, and if you're starting as a business, you can't really operate as pre-ordering. You know, I, I ended up doing that with yeah. Chris and Mark one. I got the point where um, I would just uh, say, right, I'm going to buy the next twelve issues of this. Here's sixty bucks. <laughs> Just yeah, I'm paid up for the air, so I don't have to worry about right. it. But uh, I don't think he actually did that with too many people, because I mean, obviously between New Zealand yeah. and uh, US, the price fluctuations are all over the place with exchange rates and stuff like that. So it's very tricky to do. Um, right. But you, when you talk when you talk about manga, you're absolutely right. Every pretty much comic shop in the world right now is struggling to keep their shelf full of manga. Now that's a combination of a couple of things. Uh, the world shipping's gone to pot. Um, you know, things that would cost uh, three thousand to send a container over is about twelve thousand to send a container. Uh, yeah, it's mm. air freight's actually going to end up working out cheaper than um, uh, shipping stuff at the moment. And so you've got a lot of, with COVID and with the Suez Canal blockage, you've got a lot of containers sitting empty all around the world that haven't been picked up. The whole delivery and transportation flow is just awful. So you're seeing big delays in a lot of uh, hardcover books um, and a lot of uh, paperback books that are printed out pretty cheaper. In the main, a lot of manga. Yeah. It's printed out very cheaply in China and then shipped all over the world, tripped to Japan and then shipped out again. So most, yeah. and with all the, the very, you know, uh, uh, except for New Zealand, most places around the world have had very long lockdowns and there's been a huge increase in spending mm. on nostalgia, uh, stuff people grew up with, stuff that, you know, you're familiar with and happy with. Um you know, and and kids themselves have been discovering. You know, they've discovered all these Netflix anime series, and and then based on the book, and then they've been trying to get the book from comic shops, yeah. and the shelves are empty. So you know, yeah, it, it, that sort of thing's working. Uh, but yeah, they, it, it's amazing how the explosion of manga is. Uh, my mate, um, one of the reasons Hedrick, I think one. Like, one of the things um, I think the re and this is my um, one of my things with um, with the big two, and even the you know like the other uh, other um, the top five is because a uh, comic industry um, company manga does your five volumes or so or twelve volumes, which it takes about two years I guess uh, because they come out on a you know on a weekly basis oh. chapter per week. So and the show to jump and all the other uh, collective series. Now, then they put the volumes out, and they built in weekly things like they used to do with 2008, right? With the periodical, yeah. whatever, uh, monthly, uh, weekly books. So they come out 
and then at the end of I, I guess a, several weeks or whatever, they come to put the um, the volumes together, 170 books, 170 pages or something. And if it's, if it's a successful one, they get into the anim, animated series, right? The anime mm-hmm. version of it. Now, the anime now is the is the promotion and uh, the the marketing tool for the ma- manga. So the, yes. so so you've got that. So you've got to advert a commercial for the manga. Now, that's going to keep going for another 12, 24 volumes, and it's going to complete when it's just, the writer decides what well, this is how going to complete. And oh, it's going to go on for one piece, like a thousand cops, you know, a thousand volumes. Now, or episodes. Now, back in the day, we were talking about X Men, right? You had the series, ongoing animated series based on the and Uncanny X Men series. Mm-hmm. Uh, I've yep. also I just pulled up um, you know Fantastic Four here uh, yeah. there was Spider-Man's over there yeah. somewhere yep. uh, there's Mark there was um, um, oh gosh Silver Surfer um, Batman Robin the whole shebang did I lose you? yep I think I've just lost um uh, I've lost Mark, so we'll carry on. So they had all these other different um, shows, uh, uh, cartoon shows. Here we go. No idea what Lost happened. Lost for a bit. No idea what yeah. happened. <laughs> yeah. So through the but 80s yeah, and were, 90s, they... you had all, all these different shows, G.I. Joe, uh, Mark, uh, M-A-S-X. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry. Okay, <laughs> he man, um, yeah, Avengers, all the 80s stuff, yeah. 80s stuff 90s stuff. Mm. Now you get to 2000, you get to 2010, you get to 2020. Don't know what happened, and the balls dropped. Like, they, the, well, the, the big two, there is, there is some the stuff oh, out there. Also, there, there was Spawn stuff. as well. There was also Spawn, I forgot to mention. Oh, yeah, Spawn. yeah. That, 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 was, uh, that yeah. was an adult, adult series on MTV, the Spawn, yeah, you know, yes. Yeah. Yeah. And so they had all this. Now, now they basically don't do that. They've got, like you were saying, like they've got like this entire story art. They could hmm. just go bang. Here it is. We've got the, all these animated companies ready to go. Last year they said, you know, they said on the on the backside and didn't do nothing with it. Um, I hmm. guess that's where Invincible came out of from Image. Right, yep. of course, Robert Kirkman's name's involved, so of course he could do that. But I don't see, and this is the fault that I see in, um, you know, the big two, of not taking their good for um, any, you know, all their past mm-hmm. um, great story arcs by great writers and just turning it. I mean, they could have a Hell, Hell, Hellraiser, uh, sorry, Hellblazer, John Constantine TV uh, yeah. animated series from, you yeah. they've got 300 issues. They had yeah. a movie. They could have just turned up, boom, straight away. And Keanu Reeves involved was it good, except the movie. Of course, he wasn't. It wasn't blonde. Wasn't British. Wasn't British. Wasn't British. It wasn't from. Yeah, Little it wasn't Little. British. It wasn't it was all American. <laughs> but it was what it was, and I was okay. Yeah. And listen, but if you didn't, if you around, didn't, if you didn't know who John Constantine yeah. was, it was a fine movie. <laughs> that's it. That's yeah. that's it. So I've got the game and all, but so at the end of it, right? So you got 20 years of just dropping the ball on the hard work that they've done in the previous, uh, you know, two decades, just mm-hmm. building up on all the IP. So and, wh- and here wh- comes and here comes manga, right? Here comes yeah. manga. Every yeah. single thing that's successful, anime. Anything, anime, anime. Let's go, let's go. You can. I mean, I watched the anime that was like later turned into manga yesterday about. Um, Gosh, it was called uh, Camino Friends. So it's about this. It's kind of like sci-fi, but it isn't sci-fi, but it's sci-fi. About a, a, just females, all characters females, right? So uh, there's some sort of like uh, they're part of a Japari park, which is a Sahara thing, and talks about um, Amazon. So it's a, it's a park, and they just like it's a show for kids, PG. And I'm yeah. like. What is going on that these other guys just can't grasp that that cartoons are easier to accessible to people than 
theaters. So last year, oh, you couldn't get theaters going on. So you could have spent uh, like yeah, months on it just going tick, 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 like they did with Batman Long Halloween, right? I guess that's what mm-hmm. it came out of. But sure. you've got so many amazing titles. Why yeah. not? Like, I mean, so I think they've got like what's 52 it? comics a week. Yeah. Is it 52 so, uh, a month? Uh, DC's not anymore. It used to be, but uh, <laughs> they've yeah. scaled way, way back. I think they're less than 30 now. But what you've got is that there has been stuff and you've got to remember all that stuff is actually, it's not aimed at you and me anymore. Uh, and even the X-Men was mm-hmm. actually, you know, at the time I was 12, 13 or whatever it was, you know, it was actually aimed at that eight to 12 age group. Um, but what mm-hmm. that program did, it didn't talk down. So you've from, yeah. I think 2000 and eight or nine, there was Avengers Earth Mightiest. And that was written by mm. Carl and Yost, who, um, who created uh, X-23 and Wolverine uh, and X-Men Evolutions. Uh, there yeah. are a lot of people who grew up with that, that show. That had three or four seasons and then, and then stopped. Um, but Avengers yeah. Earth Mightiest was like the greatest hits of the Avengers. And uh, uh, it was kind of a cross between... This was just before the Avengers movie came out, and it was done really well. And then, as did with them, when Disney bought them, they had they they stopped that, and there was a, Avengers Assemble came out, and the storytelling was I would say Disney fired a bit. It was kind of dumbed down a little bit, whereas Earth's Mightiest mm. had some. It was more of the continuous storytelling. Reserves Mightiest was back to the not the overall arc. It was back to the one and done episodes, and it was very much well. That was almost from six. It, it moved the age group watching it down, and the a prolific yeah. and a lot of that stuff gets caught up because it was only on Disney Kids or around the world. That was a pay per view prescription. It wasn't available in every country. Yeah. Um, Whereas, you know, when the X-Men came out, there were only three TV channels in New Zealand and the X-Men's animated came out. Yeah. So, and it wasn't going to be, there was no cartoons on TV one. Um, so now you've got, there is content out there, but yeah. it's been diluted over so many different streams and it's not as accessible. Uh, and I don't think it's mm. as challenging because I don't think, I think it doesn't, I think the one thing the first X Men series did, and the Batman animated series, it didn't talk down the kids. Yeah, you know, it yeah. had st- it had adult themes and and conflicts that you know challenge challenge kids and made you think. A lot of the stuff it's mm. there, but it's just not. It hasn't got. I wouldn't say an edge, but it's just not mm. normalized. Or I I don't know. Yeah, it, it, it's which is frustrating. Yeah. But again. We're not the target audience anymore. So there may be some kids out there but who this, this is love it. it so like, I so, mean, like, yeah. But if, if, if they love it, love it to bits, like with these things, what I've noticed is that the toy companies are bringing back 80s products, right? And 90s products on the show. And, it, and it's not kids who are buying it, it's guys so, like you and me. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and what shows they like, can't, they, they can't, they, they can't afford to buy it. Right, and the, it shows that they, they've lost that market anyway by having to do that because they've priced the market out for the kids. Yeah, well, you wait for the next six months. You wait for the next six months because plastic's going through the roof. So, uh, yeah, mm-hmm. you're talking an extra 10 quid on almost everything that you might be buying now. So Funko Pops are mostly 100% plastic, so I can see those going up about three or four quid each. So. Yeah, I'm probably just I'm, trying to get, just trying to get my to, dog out. <laughs> Come on, yeah, I'm trying to. I'm like, I'm trying to get my last. Oh, I know what happened. I just, I just realized I screwed up. I uh, told my Funko Pops. I just realized I screwed up majorly. I um, I walk. Um, I was supposed to go grab these two off the yeah. show, um, like from the back, and it didn't yeah. show up. And then it also didn't show up on my, um... no, it was these two from um, Blade Runner, my favorite show, movie of all yep. time. Yep. Right. So you, and, won't, be, you so... won't be getting to see Blade Runner. You, don't, 
you don't see you don't see yeah. uh, five so, and ten but, year olds buying those. <laughs> yeah, but here's the thing. Here's the thing. So it's not on my it's not on my back thing. Um, and I'm and I'm there fuming because I'm like it's gone. Somebody's bought it. It's gone, and I've forgotten that. I, you know, um, it's gone. So I just ordered the same two again, and it's got delivered this morning, and it's just sitting over there in the box. <laughs> Oh, so I'm, I got to go oh, figure no. out how, you know, I've just spent another 50 bucks or 56 dollars because I had to be sent. Because you, you just, because you just mentioned that I went, went up and got, got these. I went to actually get Deckard and, um, you know, Deckard and Chris. Yeah. Right. Because I'm trying to complete my things. That's what I was going to say that I, I don't need to um, complete my thing, uh, my, my four pack of those because. I just did because it got delivered this morning. Because I'm I'm a completist, right? Yeah, yeah. I think oh. comic book readers are completed. You know? Hello. And so <laughs> and so the other thing is, um I have oh gosh, where is where is it? Uh I've completed my X Men. I've pl- completed my um my um oh that's right, my boys. I gotta complete my boys. Yeah. Because that's what I should have bought was the two boys. Or I haven't ordered these two ones from there. It's like, oh, this is going to cause me a headache. But it's okay. I'm sure there's somebody out there who wants these two. From You'll, be You'll be fine. You'll be fine. I'll get rid of them sometime. But I mean, even might not even, depending. Yeah. Uh, but oh, look, I'm, so, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to get rid of the thing about the extra stuff. Toys, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, so, like you're saying, the pricing kids out. But the other thing is that yeah, you're right. They they're going they're going for us to and nostalgic about what we loved in the past. But and that's why I think Funko works because Funko goes around and um, you know, gets titles that are great, like the big t- proper titles. I think they went wrong when they try to get TV shows that that like TV talk shows. Come on, you know who wants it? But when they go around like movies, you know, superhero stuff. When they go into horror movies, because they start doing horror movies and stuff. Yeah, you know, uh, that sort of because they don't just put out the one when it comes to movies and stuff. It's like this one here, they put out four, four, and they put out six with the boys. And I've got bright, um, Starlight up there, and I've got, I've got Butcher coming and all that, mm-hmm. you know. But, but we, like, when you're a kid, you, you couldn't afford 20 bucks, five bucks on a, on a toy, right? Nothing. You never. So, uh, I, I, I have, yeah. actually, I, I bought a couple uh, from Mark One because they're on sale. And even then, I, I was going for that. Hey, when I'm a teenager, I should be out, you know, drinking and playing rugby, and, and I've got all these toys. Yeah. So I, ooh, I felt a bit weird about it, but you know, I still got it and yeah. set it up. I remember t- I, got, I took it to when I first got my, my first job. I, I got my desk and I thought I'll I'll bring a toy in and put it. And I was like, that lasted about three days because I yeah. felt a bit stink. Yeah. <laughs> but these days, you could probably you could do that and no worries, no one would care. Yeah. You know, it was the, the the comics and your love of fandom was still sort of a shadowy thing that you kind of kept to yourself and maybe a couple of friends yeah. who, who knew. But now it's okay to be, in, you know, I wouldn't say, in, I, I think the word nerd and geek is used wrongly, you know, where we're all fans yeah. and it's okay to be fans to so, things. You know, it's exactly the same. So my love for comic books is the same as someone's love for the, um, Manchester United, you know. You see yeah. people wandering around yeah. in blazer all around the world. People in blazer and Manchester United or Liverpool kits, and the, yeah. you know all, they're not even the they're black. not even. Yeah, yeah. All, all blacks is a, a touch different, but similar. Yeah. yeah. Um. The but yeah, it's it's okay to love what you love, you know. And with you know with the internet and the world's a very small place, you know people will share that love with you, and you know that's half yeah. the reason why it started making my own comics is um you know it's it's amazing people all around the world who if, I, I wouldn't if i wasn't in the uk i wouldn't be doing this because you know you've, right. you've got a close network of comics people here um kickstarters are very popular over here uh they work they work really well kick, kick, going on kickstarter once a week is a saying for some people is going online and ordering stuff from the comic book shop you know it's just just done and um it, it's it's good you know um but the it, yeah it, it's easier now to find your community whether it's manga whether it's anime whether it's everything you know and yeah that's that's a that's a great thing and yeah 
that's the thing about you know what drew drew you to X Men as a kid anyway. You know, you you might feel times when you're isolated or alone, and you know you find solace in, in your books and your adventures and the comics and stuff, and you see similar characters struggling with things. And um, yeah, you know, and, and it's a bit. <laughs> comics are expensive, man. Don't get me wrong. Things are. It's you know, it's some some things are very cost prohibitive. Um, you, you, we talk about distribution and kids getting their hands on it. There's only about five comic shops in New Zealand, and then there's some online shops yeah. as well, which are guys running stuff out of the out of home and stuff. Mm-hmm. But um, it's it was always I think growing up, you know, we had access to 2000 AD and a lot of those shitty. Yeah. Uh, they were they were very they were kid friendly comics like um, Buster and uh, Dandy and Bino uh, and Bino yeah. Yeah, yeah 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 and they're, they're yeah, still on supermarket yeah, yeah they're, they're still on supermarket shelves yeah. here uh, I doubt very much they're in dairies in New Zealand anymore I, don't, I doubt I don't no. know two thousand ODs even on the shelf in dairies in New Zealand anymore Commando no, was the I other one yeah. you know remember Commando the little real small little books yeah. about war 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 stories jesus i mean they're, they're still plugging away they, they work out of uh, aberdeen in scotland they're still plugging away most of it's um reprints but uh yeah you know not really top of mind for a young kid to want to buy a war comic anymore because wars even yeah. though there are there are there are wars and troubles in the world it certainly is not top of mind for a kid you know whereas we grew up we had grandparents who fought in world war Two and stuff like that or vietnam and you know, yeah. Kids these days, are, kids these days don't know how lucky they are. I tell you, <laughs> but um, well, it's, it's, well, it's they, interesting. They, uh, I think it's it's not it's not the thing that you want to escape into, and no, um, no, and absolutely. because because it's you know it's in movies, it's online, it's uh, it's in the news. You see it all happen all the time. It's not an escapist thing as it used to be back in the eighties and nineties because it's not. You know, who wants to see that sort of stuff in reality and then go mm. and read it? Whereas yeah. superheroes and all this, yeah. you know, supernatural stuff, anime, manga, and stuff, yeah. it's escapism, you know. Yeah. Like, re- like one of my favorites right now, um, recently uh, is Re Zero, you know, uh, mm-hmm. uh, Life in Another another World, you know, the characters in it. I just love the characters in that and the stories in it. It's like another world. You're not, you're not in, you know, the little New Zealand, you're not in, um, you know, not on our universe. It's some, yeah. or even on our planet. You're somewhere else, yeah. and escapism, and that's like where mm. superheroes come in, right? It's like someone else, somewhere else, doing some other element or universe of you know version of our Earth. 